Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. So I got my hands on a phone that kickstarted the foldable display lineup. So let's get started. If you are someone new to our channel, please consider subscribing to our channel as you do regular videos for various smartphones like this one, smartwatch reviews, tech tutorials and much more. Also check out our playlist tab to find categorized videos for various content we post on this channel. Foldables have now evolved from their embryonic stage to the folding screen smartphones, which I think is still in their embryonic phase. There are certainly improved iteration of folding screen. Currently, the top of the line folding screen smartphone includes the latest Samsung Galaxy Z Flip, which is a tiny device opens up to be a slightly taller than usual smartphone. And the same is also the case with the Moto Razr. I would personally go with these type of devices because their screen folds inwards and you all might know that you cannot get a folding Gorilla Glass display at this point. The inward folding screen can also be seen on the Galaxy Fold. Now this is something that I really want when the technology makes it more durable. There are other folding screen smartphones like the Huawei Mate X which folds outwards leaving the screen exposed all the time. This is also the case with the Royal Flex Pi. This was the first one to actually introduce a folding screen. So up until now, these are the options that you get for a folding screen smartphone. And to get either of these, you have to let loose your wallet. Just for perspective, the Galaxy Fold will cost you a whopping 2600 Canadian dollar. So then let's talk about a different category and that is the foldable phone or you can tell them as a dual screen smartphone. Currently the top of the line dual screen smartphone is the LG V60 ThinQ and the LG G8X ThinQ. So both these devices sort of have a case which houses a secondary display so you can pop the phone out of the case to use it as a regular smartphone. Both these phones are awesome and top of the line but they have this huge bezel or let's say the case in between both the screens which is not that optimal. Now there is also the Nubia Z20 which is your regular smartphone but has another screen at the back. It's pretty cool but I'm not including such phone in this category as you can't use the other screen simultaneously for multitasking. Now this whole dual screen smartphone concept was actually kickstarted by Kyocera Echo in 2011 which when opened up has two screens side by side again with a bigger bezel between both the screen. Now considering the current specs of a smartphone Kyocera Echo cannot be called a smartphone. So what I have today is the ZTE Exxon M. It's a dual screen smartphone which opens outward but it has Gorilla Glass 5 display with the smallest bezel between both the display. Now yes, I get it, you might wonder why I have a phone announced in November 2017 with me. And there are two answers to it. Number one, obviously I can't get a phone except this one for 200 Canadian dollar. Yes, you heard it right, I got it for 200 dollar from Amazon and I have linked it in the description of this video. The cherry on top is it's unlocked. I'm not a big YouTuber at this point to spend $2600 to get my hands on a folding display device. So that's why I have this one on my table. Number two, as I said earlier, at this point, this is the only phone with the smallest bezel between two screens. And it actually has a tougher Gorilla Glass 5 on both sides. And the entire phone is made of metal and it feels premium. So in this video I'll be talking about this phone and if you know about it already or you own one you can just skip ahead and check out my other awesome videos but if you don't then stick around as this is a cool phone you don't want to miss out on. Quickly inside the box there was a USB type C fast charging cable and a user manual. Now this phone is not a top of the line smartphone it only has a 4 gig of RAM and 64 gig of onboard storage. You also have an option to expand it up to 256 gigs with a micro SD card. This phone has the Android 7.1, the Nugget, with a 2.15 GHz quad-core Qualcomm Snapdragon processor with a Qualcomm Adreno 530 624 MHz graphical controller. 
all this is powered by 3180 milliamp hour battery which for me does not last a full day but that's also the case with my s10 plus with all these specs at this point i'm still able to play asphalt 9 on this phone which is a graphically intense game now does it work not as great as my galaxy s10 plus but hey it's not that bad either now the party trick of this phone is the strong hinge between both these screens and the super satisfying click you get every single time you close and open it up hear it out with me now this is super satisfying and robust you can even see at the back it's completely metal with precise grooves and indentation lining up together to have a strong folding mechanism and due to the hinge on the right hand side all the buttons are on the left hand side and to me even being a right handed person it was super easy to get used to it especially the right hand is free to use for navigation and it was relatively easy to hold with the left hand when opened up at the top there is the sim and the memory card tray under it is the volume rocker which is also metal and there is this power key with a built-in fingerprint reader super snappy to read your fingerprint and turns on the phone at the same time there is a customizable button you can use it for a camera control or quick launch to your favorite app at the bottom there is a USB Type-C port with two speakers stereo on both sides and on the top there is a headphone jack which is awesome. Now this whole rectangular box design feels awesome to use after using all those rounded edge phones. Now there is only one camera which is a 20 megapixel shooter with no optical image stabilization and a dual LED flash. This camera can shoot 4K ultra high definition videos at 30 frames per second and take pictures at a resolution of 5472 by 3648 pixels. Basically it's not even comparable to the current smartphone's camera but hey you can get awesome high resolution selfies with this f1.8 aperture. Now both these displays are TFT LCD 5.2 inch capacitive multi-touch display with the resolution of 1080 by 1920 pixel, 424 pixel per inch resolution with 16 million colors. They are not bad at all but you can't compare them to the current AMOLED or OLED display but both of these screens have a Gorilla Glass 5 which is quite durable. Now let's wrap up with the multitasking option and my final say about this device. So you have this so called M button at the bottom with four pretty straightforward options. The first one is A slash A which means both the screen will display the same content. This is highly useful in my case as I can set up two YouTube videos for my daughters and they can both watch same content together without fighting. Next is so called the tablet mode where you will be able to use it as a tablet. Just a side note not all the apps are supported with this mode but most commonly used apps like Facebook, Google Chrome, Twitter, Messenger, uh, Amazon etc along with the YouTube are supported. Now watching a video in this tablet mode is not an awesome experience but just guess how it will be on the LG ThinQ series with a big hinge between both the screen. At least that's not the case over here. Now, I really use this option for web browsing, Facebook, Twitter, etc. rather than watching YouTube videos as reading on this tablet mode, believe me, is awesome. The next one is A slash B mode where you get two screens to be used separately which is what I really like and I use it all the time as I can reply to all your comments on one screen and watch or browse content on the other screen. The last mode is just the A or one screen mode where only the primary screen stays on. The other one will be turned off. The only scenario where I think I use this mode is to use the other screen as a phone stand. 
So as you can see this is a highly functional phone. I wish they could have reduced the center bezel by just having one display's edge touching with the other display's edge to have sort of a no bezel at all if you know what I mean. So will I recommend this phone in 2020? The answer is no because it's slow. Here is the Geekbench score of this phone versus my Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. ZTE does not have a top of the line specs or camera and it runs on an older Android version. Plus there ain't a lot of apps supported for the tablet mode. But hey, if you're someone like me who does not want to break the bank and get your hands on a dual display technology, then this is absolutely worth it. If that's the case, then just click the link in the description down below to get one for yourself at only $200 until the supply lasts. Also let me know if in the comments down below if you want me to do more videos on this phone. So that's it with the ZTE Exxon M dual screen folding smartphone. Please support my channel by subscribing so one day I can get those expensive top of the line folding phone to bring them up to you. So I really hope you found this video helpful. If you did then please give this video a thumbs up and maybe give it a thumbs up anyways as an appreciation to our effort for making this video. It really means a lot. Thank you so much for watching and take care. I'll catch you guys in the next one.